So my facade self is the main cause of my choice towards unloving actions. Now I've introduced the term sinful here. I have purposefully done so because many of you have not got something that I've been trying to teach you for many, many years and that is this. Anything that is unloving, whether it's a thought, word or a deed, shall we call them, an action, anything that's unloving is sin. Now when I say to you unloving behaviour, which is a term I use very, very frequently actually, you don't think of it as a sin. You just go, oh, it's just some unloving behaviour. And you don't think of it as, what does the word sin connotate? If I use the word sin to you. We go to Daniel. Yeah, or Maxwell, Daniel, one of the two. <laughs> uh, has it got something to do with going against God? It has, yes. So it's about, it's about something that's not only against man or against someone else, but also it's actually unloving in terms of something that goes against God's laws, shall we say? Mm -hmm. So against God's laws. Every time we sin, actually, we're demonstrating to God that we don't care about God, actually. That we don't care about God's laws. We're demonstrating that we... we really think we should be able to get away with things all the time. We're demonstrating all of these things. We should be able to get away with being unloving. We actually have quite an arrogant viewpoint, most of us, about sin because we, we just say, oh, I've just been unloving. Nothing major. From God's perspective, it is the most major thing you could do is to be unloving. Mistakes of knowledge, puh, nothing to God. You're allowed to know nothing. And God will still love you. And God will still be fine with you. God will still give you love. But if you are unloving, now there's a different, it's different from God's perspective. And most of us don't see it that way. Most of us think, oh, I'm just unloving occasionally. You know, I know my addictions are unloving, but I really want them. <laughs> you know, we have a laugh about that. And do you see what? You can see automatically we're not seeing the seriousness of our own behavior. Yeah. And this is why God created the feedback system of pain and suffering because most of us are completely ignorant of a loving behaviour unless we get some feedback of pain and suffering and then we start going, oh, maybe I should change. In other words, we're even quite selfish about change. We're only changing because we feel pain. We don't care most of the time how much pain other, we've caused other people. We only seem to care about how much pain they caused us or or we've caused ourselves. We don't care what we've done to other people generally. And this is a problem, because what we do to other people is uh, some of the largest things, the largest sins we can engage. Okay, anything else? I'll come down to Rita and then back to Catherine. Um, a sin, it damages my soul and it causes me pain. Good. So and it has to be forgiven and repented. So yes, so let's, let's look at this one thing at a time, though, shall we? So the sin damages my soul. And then I go more in my facade because I don't want to feel more pain. That's true. But what, what, whose, other, whose soul does it also damage? Others. Others. Like, like, to be honest with you, I'm more okay with you choosing to damage yourself than I am okay with you choosing to damage someone else. Can you see why? Because I increase their suffering and then they go down that track. Yeah, and, they, and it wasn't their choice. See, see, when you damage someone else, there's two problems now. One problem is, is that you're not honouring free will. You're not honouring their will to make their own choice. If they want to damage themselves, let them do it. <laughs> Don't you be the person who does it to them. Because now what you've done is taken away their choice and damaged them. Right? So you've actually, every time you damage someone else, you're, you're doing two things wrong. 
not one. Whatever the thing is that you're doing wrong to damage them is one, and then the fact that you've taken away their free will in the process is two. Every time you do that, you damage yourself twice. So, so when you damage somebody else, somebody else, you damage them firstly, and then you damage yourself twice. <laughs> Not just the same or you damage yourself twice because you're breaking more than one law at the time when you're damaging them. Now, if you only damage you, then that's your free will. You're not damaging your free will, so therefore you're not damaging that part of, any, of your own soul. You're just doing what you want, damaging yourself. You've only damaged yourself once. So whenever you damage yourself, it's only once. Whenever you damage somebody else, it's twice every time you do it. Right? Most people are not aware of that, right? right? How many of you were aware that that's what's actually going on every time you damage someone else? Yeah. It's something to consider, isn't it? Yep. So, yes, damage others. So this was damage to the other people's soul. If you damage others, you're doing it twice, two sins in a row. Um, hi, Laura. Thanks, Laura. Um, so if you don't, if you see someone else damaging um, another person, mm -hmm. and you don't stop it. Mm -hmm. Do you also is that a damage for you as well? Yes, but you're damaging yourself once, because you're not impacting upon the other person's free will. You're only impacting upon your own. You do damage yourself by not acting. So sins of omission are just as serious to God as sins of commission. Yeah. So do you know know the difference? An omission is where you didn't do something that you should have done or if you loved you would have done. And a sin of commission is where you did something purposefully out of harmony with love. And both are sins from God's perspective. And in fact, the spirit world in the first sphere is littered with people who have committed a whole series of sins of omission. Did you know that? There are just so many people in the spirit world in the first sphere in the hills that are only there because they chose to not do something. Whoa. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Does that now make you less worried about mistakes? <laughs> no? <laughs> well, yeah. We all get stressed out when we hear all these things, right? <laughs> it makes sense though if you think about it, doesn't it? If you know what to do and you don't do it, if you know what's loving and you choose to purposely not do it, then then it is a sin because you already knew what was loving. You should have done it. See? 